So the first thing I want to do is kind of tackle this area. Um, I've got this piece of missing veneer, so that's not a problem. That can be glued back. Um, but what I do need to do is sort out the binding from here where the missing part starts right the way around to here where it's all starting to come away. So that's my first job. So I'm just going to very, very carefully try to prise off this binding. So, so I've got that piece of veneer in and I've prepared a piece of binding that I'm going to um, stick on and I'm going to use that acetone method um, again. I've done a test to see whether or not the acetone affects the varnish which is on, on, on the um, guitar and it doesn't and I've also done a test to see whether or not it melts and therefore will adhere the original binding and it does the, the binding I guess is celluloid um, so yeah so that's going to be glued on now um, using the acetone well as you can see the new piece of binding has been stuck in place and I need to clean it up now um, when you look at it the, the, bind, the original binding is kind of feathered away to virtually nothing around that um, leading edge. So that's what I've got to carefully try to do to my piece. <clears throat> right, so that's that corner um, sorted out. I'm very aware that what I don't want to do is kind of over restore the instrument, but equally, had I not done any work on this corner, I think it would have only got worse. I think more of the veneer would have lifted off and more of the binding would have come away. So I think it's essential to do that in this area to really preserve the instrument. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going over that edge where I've um, glued the veneer back and, the, and that binding on with some button polish. So I'm French polishing using button polish and button polish has this kind of amber hue and what that's allowing me to do is just take the edge off of that white plastic and make it look a little bit more aged and in keeping with the rest of it. And there. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going over the whole of the instrument with some 12,000 micro mesh and really I'm just um, using that as a kind of method of deep cleaning the instrument. I don't want to damage the, uh, the surface, I want the, the, the finish to be as original as possible but there are areas which are a bit grimy and there's also things like um, uh, spots of white gloss paint on it so it's just a matter of um, sorting all of those little bits out and giving it a polish up so that it's, it's, it's nice and clean. It may be old and tatty but it's clean. So originally the Gaia tone didn't have any form of shielding whatsoever and on all my electric instruments I like to shield it the best I can so that you don't pick up hum from things like fluorescent tubes, mains transformers etc. So what I've done is I've painted the control areas with um, a conductive paint and I've allowed that paint to come over the edges onto the surface of the guitar. Now. <clears throat> The, uh, the pick guard and the um, volume and control panel, I've covered the undersurface of those with some copper foil. So the idea is when this goes on the guitar, it will make contact with that um, conductive paint and it will form what's known as a Faraday cage. Um, it's the same principle as putting all of your electronics in a metal box and that will um, shield it. And um, as I say, that's something that it never had originally and will be a worthwhile improvement, yet not um, affect the aesthetics of the instrument at all. So I'm just in the process of taking new shiny screws and trying to make them look like they've had uh, 65 years of wear.
and all I'm trying to do is just dull that plating and in some cases reveal the um, copper plating underneath so yeah I'm going to do that to every single new screw that the Gaiatone has right so here we have the original strap pin most of the um, plating worn off to reveal the, the brass underneath what I hear you say is the significance of that well my friends this is the very last component that I need to attach to the Gaiatone LG50 circa 1957 before I can put the strings on and get it playing um, and call it complete so I'm just putting the strings onto the Gaiatone I just wanted to point out something interesting to you <coughs> when you look at the bridge that I made um, the first three strings, the top strings are all plain and you can see how um, the, the saddle is kind of stepped back so, you, you get, so that the larger the diameter of the string, the more the mass of the string, the more compensation you get for the intonation. And then with the wound strings we kind of start again and again they get stepped back as the strings get heavier and you need more compensation. So that's my bridge. So if we look at the Gaiatone bridge now, um, I mean obviously with this type of bridge the, you can only get the intonation um, so good and I was kind of pleased with the intonation apart from the third string and that was really bugging me. Bugging me. But when you look at how the, uh, the saddle part is compensated, the third string doesn't, doesn't step back, it's on the same kind of level as the, as the second string. So we need more compensation, but of course we can't have any more compensation because there's, there's no metal there. Um, so it occurred to me um, back in the day, did they actually use a wound um, third string instead of a plain third string? So I got myself um, a wound um, third string, same gauge 017 as the plain one that was on there, and that intonation Im improved imme immeasurably, well I say immeasurably, it improved by 20 cents and it makes it now much, much better. So yeah, um, with this type of old style bridge, my tip is then, if you've got um, the second and third string in alignment and you can't get that third string intonation correct, try swapping out a plain string for a wound string. It seems to work wonderfully on the Gliatone. So yeah, really pleased with that little one. So here we are then. The completed, the restored, the rebuilt Gliatone LG50. And I'm really very, very pleased with the way it's turned out. Um, <coughs> from what was a wreck when I got it, an unplayable wreck um, when I got it a few months ago to what it is now, um, it is obviously a complete transformation. What we've got now is a really lovely little guitar that I'm sure someone's going to love um, playing. And, you know, it's 65 years old now, and there's no reason why that couldn't last for um, another 65 years. So, yeah, very, very pleased with the outcome of that. Right, so what I should really be doing now is offering this up for sale, but um, I don't want to do that at the moment. Um, I'm currently applying the finish to my, my version, the Narvatone, um, <coughs> and really what I want to do is a kind of a video once that's finished and compare them both side by side. Um, so I'll be hanging it all onto it for a little while, but I mean, of course, if you are interested in buying this, there's, there's no problem with you um, contacting me via my website. You'll find the email address 
and um, we can have a chat about it. But yeah, very pleased with that. So until the next video, um, thanks again for all your support with this project and uh, yeah, see you soon. Take care. Cheers.